Hey there, welcome back to Marketing Matchmaker. I am getting ready to head out on vacation, so I am super excited about that. And I hope you are also in the swing of summer and getting um, your vacation time in. I love being able to head out and really spend time with my family away from all technology. We're actually going to a dude ranch this year. Um, out in kind of the middle of nowhere. So there's not going to be much access to technology, but it, we will, you know, we'll be able to, you know, get back in touch with nature and go horseback riding and all of the things that we're planning on doing um, there. So I'm super excited. I picked this episode because I think a lot of people often feel like they're behind the eight ball or they're not sure how to stay ahead of all of the things that come up in marketing. The biggest thing that you can do to really stay ahead of your marketing, number one, is really creating that strategy. I've talked about it several times over the course of this podcast, but a strategy is your number one defense against anything happening in your business. Having a plan, a strategy and a plan, whether that's a business plan, a marketing plan, your marketing plan should actually be connected to your business plan and be part of your business plan. But all of those things are going to help you to really stay ahead of the curve. So today's episode is really about that, staying ahead of the curve. And we're gonna dive into a couple of pieces of things that I want you to focus on as you're creating your strategy and as you're um, looking to really grow your business with marketing and being willing to invest in your marketing in the world of marketing your business, like in general. And I think this is where some people often get scared or intimidated by marketing. It's really dynamic, right? It's ever changing. There are different things that are working, the algorithms, the whether it's reels or TikTok versus Instagram versus Facebook versus whatever it is you're doing. There's always something new coming up and something that's, you know, different in marketing. And I think a lot of people often get intimidated by that fact. But there are a couple of things that you can do that'll just help you stay one step ahead and most importantly help you create a really successful marketing within your business. So, number 1, kind of already said it towards the beginning of the show is really creating that well-defined marketing strategy. Your marketing strategy really needs to dive into not just your business, but also who you are. What are the values of your business? I don't think I've mentioned this as much, but I think what people don't really think about when they're creating their marketing strategy or their business plan is that oftentimes their personal values get transferred over to the business. And if you know what your values are in your business, you're better able to model that business and mold that business and your marketing around those those values. So if your values, like for me in my business, my values are impact and influence, right? I love having an impact in my clients' businesses. And I love being able to influence their businesses so that they're able to grow and scale it's really the joy I have within my business. So I think within your marketing strategy, think about that. What is the values within your business? Secondary to that, who are you authentically at the core? Because your marketing, especially if you are a coach or a consultant, a course creator, you're the face of your marketing. You're the face of your business. Even those big businesses often have a face to that business until they get to the Amazon level, right? Jeff Bezos was the face of his business until his business exploded and became Amazon. Russell Brunson is still the face of ClickFunnels. You know, we can go through all different examples, but the reality is, is if you are a personality-based business, meaning that you are the person within the business, you're going to be the face of the business. So you really need to know at your core authentically who you are and what are you comfortable doing, right? Are you comfortable doing lives on Facebook or Instagram? Are you comfortable doing reels? 
reels, my friend, that's ugh, a realization I came to not, I mean, it, it's, they've been around for a little while, so it's not like it was this new realization. However, you don't have to dance. You don't have to do something that you're not comfortable doing in reels or in TikTok or shorts on YouTube or shorts on LinkedIn. You don't have to do something you're uncomfortable doing in order to create those. But that's my point with really diving into who you are. What are you comfortable doing? Are you comfortable speaking to a room of people? Maybe that's the way you market your business, getting on people's stages. Are you more comfortable doing a podcast where you're speaking to a room of nobody? That's fabulous. Are you comfortable messaging and writing up long form content on your social media? Awesome. Do that. The thing is, is you really need to know what your comfort level it is so that you can consistently continue to do this. Then we start looking at your business itself when it comes to your strategy. What type of business do you have and how many people do you need to connect with in order to get a sales call? And then how many sales calls do you need in order to get a sale? Those pieces of information are very important to the type of strategy you create. And the last piece is diving into your ideal client, right? Who they are, what they're thinking, what it is that they're you know, concerned about, what problem do they have that you're going to solve? All of those pieces end up diving in and developing your overall marketing strategy. And when you can really define that very well and you know what it is, You have a foundation set in your business in order to really help you grow and scale. Mm -hmm. Throwing spaghetti at the wall or just trying different things isn't a strategy. Hope isn't a strategy. Really having a consistent plan of action is part of your strategy and will help you to really grow your business. Number two is being adaptable. So as I said, all of social media changes all of the time. I think it was, I don't know, right around 2020, somewhere in the beginning of middle of 2020, micro offers were a huge thing and they were selling like hotcakes. That $29 offer, people were making millions of dollars off of it. And then all of a sudden the market went, eh, we're tired of those. And so being able to pivot when you see that happen, when you see your sales decline on a micro offer, being able to pivot back into maybe a free offer is going to be essential to really being ahead of the curve because you can see these kind of things coming. And if you can't, hire someone who can. That adaptability and flexibility will allow you to make pivots in your business. They don't necessarily have to be massive pivots. There's nothing that says you have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But maybe instead of going directly to a webinar, you put a quiz or a download in front of that webinar and get a little bit more warming up before you head to a webinar, right? Those kind of pivots can really help you to continue to grow your marketing and your business effectively. So just being ready to adapt your strategy will help your business succeed long-term. Continuous monitoring and optimization. I don't know how many times I've said this, but this relates right into the next one, which is data. Being able to look at your data, monitor it and optimize it is what is going to set you and your business apart from everybody else. Being able to look at the numbers and get not just see them, but understand what they're telling you, allows you to be adaptable. It allows you to be able to make those changes within your strategy. It also allows you to see where there might be a hole in your strategy. Maybe you see that email five of your email sequence is tanking and nobody opens it. Maybe you need to rewrite it. Or maybe... It's something else that if you're aware of what your data is telling you, you're better able to optimize it. That includes things like networking or speaking or going on other people's podcasts. All of these are pieces of marketing, but are you tracking what's working or are you just doing things because somebody told you to do them? 
if you actually track what's working, like what networking group are you getting the most leads from? Double and triple down on that one. What networking group are you getting no leads from? Get rid of it. That's what I mean. When you're better able to monitor and optimize your strategy, you're better able to make decisions that aren't guesses. Because guesses, well, they're just that. They're guesses. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose with a guess. You know, it's like gambling. And the last thing we want to do when it comes to our business is gamble. Combining all of these pieces, your adaptability, your data-driven decisions, monitoring and optimizing your strategy, and having that core strategy developed is what is going to set you apart from your competition. It is what is going to make you a winner in this game of business and of marketing and of life in general. Really being able to hone in on these pieces and pivot, adapt, make really good decisions based on data rather than guessing. That's really what's going to help you grow your business, increase your revenue, and scale your impact. And my friends, if you don't know how to do these things, head over to yourmarketingmatchmaker.com and schedule a free strategy session. We can discuss this and maybe we can help. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Matchmaker podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. Please head over to Apple iTunes and leave a review so we can hear from you. And if you are a coach, consultant, or online course creator who are looking to grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact, connect with me at yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. I look forward to hearing from you.